Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Today's video is all about bending brakes and what you need to know if you're going to build a Zenith airplane from scratch. If you're really new to metal fabrication, a bending brake is a piece of machinery used to bend sheet metal into shape and provides long straight bends. A lot of these concepts will apply to building any aluminum airplane, but I'm going to focus on things specific to Zenith models and more specifically to the Stoll CH750 that I'm currently building. There's a lot of information to cover, so let's get into it. Okay, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you may have noticed that I have mentioned several problems with my own bending brake. I've broken it twice, modified it several times, and it is still way less than optimal. In my opinion, the bending brake is the single most important tool in the all-metal airplane workshop. It really is a must-have for the home workshop if you're going to build an airplane. Productivity grinds to a slow crawl if you have to wait to use a brake or save up a bunch of bends for a marathon bending session of most parts off-site. For a Zenith aircraft in particular, you will be fabricating about 85 to 90 percent of the airframe on the bending brake. You will need easy access to it throughout the project and you will likely have to make some replacement parts during the assembly process. Unfortunately, it is not practical for the average home builder to go out and buy a production brake large enough or with the right configuration to build the whole airplane. At the factory, Zenith Aircraft uses several types of brakes and methods to fabricate parts for their kits. But for us scratch builders, a modest DIY bending brake and maybe a small DIY press brake are the only real practical solutions. In the Zenith Stoll CH750, you will be bending mostly 60-61 T6 aluminum alloy in various thicknesses. There are some other small quantities of 4130 chrome moly steel and a few other bits here and there. So why is a DIY bending brake the only practical solution? Well, for starters, you need to be able to put a 1 8 inch or 1 quarter inch bend radius in your parts. This is something that store-bought brakes will not do without modification because they are designed to make very sharp bends. You need to be able to bend up to 102.5 inches wide or about 8.6 feet in 40 thousandths, 32 thousandths, and 25 thousandths thicknesses. You also need to be able to bend up to about 41 inches wide in 63 thousandths thickness material. And then there are various C-channels, Z-angles, hat sections, and other structures you have to fabricate. Surprisingly, many store-bought or used industrial brakes will not accommodate the longest or heaviest bends in this airplane. You also should have a bending brake with adjustable setback. I say should because you can get by without it for many parts, but you will produce less than ideal bends. Setback is the distance from the jaws of the brake to the axis of the bend. If this isn't adjustable, then the brake cannot properly be adjusted to different thicknesses of material and you generally will not be able to overbend past the typical 45 degree limit imposed by the clamping leaf. The material is just simply in the way. By far, the most difficult bends in the Zenith Stoll CH750 are the spars for the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer. These are the longest bends at about 8.6 feet. Just finding a brake big enough to do them is the main challenge, even before you have to consider the bend radius problem. The next most difficult bends in the airplane are the four largest pieces in 63 thousandths. They are all right around 3 feet to 3.5 feet in length. They are the firewall top stiffener, the fuselage top channel, the fuselage rear top channel angle, and the fuselage rear top channel, which itself is the hardest part in the airplane to bend because it is a four-sided channel when finished. These are best done on a press brake. Those seven parts combined are the most difficult to fabricate simply because of either their length, thickness, or both. Fortunately, you can purchase these undrilled from Zenith if you are scratch building, even though they supply them pre-drilled in the kits. I bent my tail section spars using an industrial 10-foot brake like this one but I was fortunate enough to have access to one that has a modified bending nose to accommodate the 1 inch radius needed for those parts. I'll be bending my fuselage channels on this brake as well. Clearly this type of brake though is totally impractical for the home shop. It is way too big, heavy, and expensive. If you have access to a production shop with this kind of brake, it will still need a custom bending nose insert. 
You can achieve an acceptable bend radius by adding layers of aluminum bent around the factory nose until you reach the 1 8 inch or 1 quarter inch radius needed. It takes a little trial and error to get a nice consistent radius using this method though. And you can certainly machine a custom bolt-on bending nose, but this can get expensive if you don't do the machining work yourself. Finally, there are some skins and wing channels that are right around 7 feet long, but the overwhelming majority of the parts can be fabricated on a brake that is right around 54 inches wide. So let's talk about store-bought or off-the-shelf brakes, although that'd have to be a really big shelf. There are a few low-cost options like the Harbor Freight 36-inch metal brake with stand, which is currently priced around $230. It's a decent value, but it's not heavy or rigid enough for some of the thicker or longer parts. And it's very limited in bend width at 36 inches. Don't even bother with their smaller bench mounted models, they aren't nearly strong enough. Then there is the Grizzly 42 inch sheet metal brake. It is much more rugged and is slightly wider than the Harbor Freight model, but currently costs a whopping $625 new, plus $109 in freight if you don't live near one of Grizzly's showrooms. If you want to consider an industrial brake, the Bailey 10-foot industrial straight brake, like this one, is only about $7,125 new. But even very old used industrial brakes like these typically go for a few thousand dollars and weigh about one pound per dollar. So they're very heavy and expensive. There are lots of other brands and models comparable to these, so if you elect to buy a bending brake, you do have plenty of choices available. Do not even think about trying to use an aluminum siding brake like this one. They do not have the structural rigidity, clamping force, or mass required to bend the kinds of parts we have to make. Although aluminum is very soft and easy to machine, 6061 T6 alloy is quite resistant to bending. Bending forces go up greatly as the size and length of the parts increase. Some alloys of aluminum are actually harder to bend than some alloys of steel. This is why the big 10-foot industrial brakes weigh a few thousand pounds. But there are also lots of used brakes available at estate sales, tool auctions, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, etc. So you may find a deal that's worthwhile. However, all of the store-bought or off-the-shelf bending brakes will require some kind of bending nose solution to achieve the proper bend radius on a finished part. Most of us scratch builders elect to fabricate our own bending brakes because none of the store-bought auctions work really well. Besides, if you're scratch building an airplane, then scratch building a bending brake is a pretty good starting project. You can get started on smaller hand form parts like wing ribs and other small pieces like that, but eventually you're going to need a bending brake. The rudder spar and its two doublers are usually the first parts you will make that require a bending brake because you generally start this airplane by building the complete rudder. Hand forming longer parts like spars, and longer channels over form blocks will cause your part to turn out banana shaped. This is because of the stretching that occurs during the forming process. Brakes do not stretch metal in this fashion, so longer parts turn out very straight. Of the DIY bending brake options, the three most common are the Dave Clay bending brake, the Home Built Help bending brake, and the Max Machine 96040 bending brake. The Dave Clay bending brake was originally designed to fabricate a Zenith 601 XL. It is by far the cheapest brake to build and you can probably build it with all new materials even today for around $100 or less. I think I built mine for around 50 bucks before I modified it. It is made from three pieces of angle iron, square tubing for the handle, a long piano hinge, and some hardware. No welding or machining is required and it can do about 70% of the bends in the airplane. Blueprints are available free online. However, it has no tensioning trusses or jack screws, which means clamping force is limited by the clamping nuts and bolts. It has no adjustable setback, which prevents you from using the build-up method of, uh, of bending a radius other than the 1 8 inch designed into it. There are clamping through bolts in the center of the brake, so longer part blanks are limited to being clamped only by their flanges. It cannot do opposing bends like hat sections or Z-channels without great difficulty. It was originally designed at 8 feet long and cannot be scaled up without massive modifications. It simply isn't rigid enough. If you want to do most of the bends in the airplane at home, this brake is not recommended unless you are willing to buy more pre-made parts from Zenith or if you have convenient access to other bending brakes. It is a decent brake for what it was designed to do, but understand that it is very limited in capability. Up next is the Home Built Help Bending Brake, and this one here was built by Dan Hill over at the Hills Gun Channel. 
He has an excellent build series on this bending brake, so please check out the link to his channel below. This bending brake is more of a real bending brake in that it has an adjustable setback and adjustable cam locks for clamping pressure. It can also do opposing bends for hat sections and Z channels. It is limited to bends no longer than about 48 to 54 inches depending on how you build it. It will do most of the airplane except for the longest spars and a few skins and channels. It may not be able to handle the four fuselage channels I talked about before. We haven't tested it with them and so the jury is still out on that. It does require welding and a very small amount of machining. It is a relatively inexpensive brake to build and will probably cost you around $300 to $500 depending on material pricing and final configuration. It could even be built as cheaply as $200 if you have access to scrap material. Because of the small amount of machining, it is financially practical to pay to have those parts made by a machinist if you cannot do it yourself. It is also light enough to be stood up on its end for storage. As of the published date of this video, the blueprints are still free and available online from homebuilthelp.com. This brake is probably the best all-around established design for building the Zenith Stoll CH750 and many other airplanes, especially when you consider the portability, size, and cost. However, you will still need access to other bending brakes or be willing to purchase a few parts from Zenith. Finally, the granddaddy of DIY bending brakes is the Max Machine and Design 96040 bending brake. This is a very heavy duty brake designed by Larry McFarland in 1999 for his Zenith 601 project. This particular example was also built by Dan Hill. This brake is designed to bend lengths up to 96 inches in 32 thousandths and 48 inches in 40 thousandths. It is not recommended to bend anything thicker than 63 thousandths, longer than about 12 inches. It was also designed that so no single component, except for the clamping leaf assembly, weighs more than 85 pounds, making it manageable for one person to build. It weighs just under 600 pounds in original form, but can still be moved around the shop on casters. But forget trying to stand it up in the corner though. It requires more machining and welding than the home built help brake, but it can do nearly all of the bends in the airplane. However, as designed, it still will not bend the tail section spars without scaling it up. Adding eight inches to the length to be able to do the tail spars in 32 thousandths and 25 thousandths probably wouldn't be a big deal, but managing the horizontal stabilizer rear spar in 40 thousandths would require a lot more strength. Remember, this brake was originally designed to be able to bend 40 thousandths only up to 48 inches, not 102.5 inches. Bend forces go up very rapidly when you increase the length or thickness of the bend. Scaling up this brake to handle everything in the plane would require a lot of re-engineering, more material, and careful assembly. This brake is the most expensive and heaviest of the common DIY bending brakes. When Mr. McFarland first built his, he spent less than $600 on materials, but that was in 1999. Even if you have access to all the machinery to build the entire brake, like a 9-inch lathe and a mill, it will likely cost $1,000 or more unless you have access to a lot of suitable scrap material. Blueprints are currently available and cost $35 payable directly to Mr. McFarland on his website. It is an excellent bending brake. I do own a set of plans and I plan to build one in the future if and when I finish the Stoll CH750. Prices for all three of these DIY bending brakes will vary widely with the price of metals and whether you have access to discounted or bulk pricing or scrap material. There are lots of other DIY designs out there on YouTube and other websites, but even with all the choices, it's almost universally accepted that no single brake is practical to bend every part in the airplane. As you can see, the common thread between all of the DIY designs is that they will have a hard time with the seven most difficult parts in the airplane that I outlined earlier. One solution to that is adding a press brake to your shop. Eventually, if and when I build the Zenith 6 CH640, I plan to build a 40 or 50 inch hydraulic press brake kit from Swag Off-Road to complement my future version of the Max Machine Brake. That should address any of the really heavy duty bends needed on the thicker material. And it'll make a lot of the other parts and pieces that are smaller much easier. So let's briefly talk about my bending brake. Here it is in all of its garbage glory. I started with a Dave Clay bending brake but incorporated a slight modification. I added a piece of solid oak board mitered at 45 degrees on both sides so that it is reversible. On one side I radiused the miter at 1 8 inch and the other side at 1 quarter inch. This was very simple to do with my table saw and my router table. The center clamping bolts are offset to the rear so that when you flip the board around each side gets its own set of matched through holes. 
If you're going to build this style of brake, I highly recommend this modification. It makes changing between bending radiuses very easy. I bent a lot of successful parts with this bending brake and the oak bending nose works perfectly. I would not use any species of wood that is softer than oak for this modification though. I originally selected this brake primarily because it did not require any welding and I didn't have intentions to get the welder back in the day. However, when I first tried to bend the firewall top stiffener, which is the shortest of the four difficult parts in 63,000s, all of the pop rivets in the bend area pulled out of the piano hinge. I then used my DIY C-frame riveter to replace the pop rivets with solid rivets. When I tried to finish that firewall top stiffener in the revised brake, the process actually stretched and bent the piano hinge material apart so that I could no longer bend parts at all. That should tell you how difficult it is to bend 63,000s. The brake was completely out of commission for a couple of months until I figured out how to address the problem. Towards the end of that few months, I had purchased my TIG welder during the downtime. I fabricated some of the barrel hinges out of 3 quarter inch pipe and rod and welded them to the ends while incorporating a slab of 5 8 inch by 4 inch steel as the bending leaf. This allowed me to make opposing bends like those on the slat skins and some other hat sections. My barrel hinges are way overkill however and didn't need to be 6 inches long. The addition of these hinges shortened the effective bending length of my brake by one foot. Later when I tried to bend some of the longer skins, there was not enough clamping pressure to hold the parts in place. This is because the center clamping bolts have to be removed so that the larger parts blanks can pass all the way through the brake. I then improvised this goofy tensioning truss with some jack screws and square tubing I had lying around. This worked okay for some of the thinner materials but it still doesn't produce anywhere near enough tension for things like the fuselage channels. And because there's no tensioning truss on either the bed or the bending leaf, the whole brake flexes and groans in protest when I try to bend some of the simplest parts. And don't forget, I still had to have the 10 foot industrial brake for the tail spars and the fuselage channels. Since I have almost all the parts in the plane fabricated already, I'm not going to build a new bending brake to finish this project but I will scrap my current brake when the project is done and start clean with a new bending brake for any future projects. So what do I recommend to you? Well, that all depends on how much you want to spend on your bending brake, how much fabrication work like machining and welding that you can do or are willing to pay to have done, and how much of the plane you really want to fabricate from scratch. I was able to get by with my modified Dave Clay bending brake, but it wasn't without lots of downtime, re-engineering delays, and other problems. It works, but at the cost of having to modify it a lot or simply ordering a few more prefabricated parts. As I said before, the home built help bending brake is probably the best all around DIY bending brake for most people. It's fairly portable, relatively easy to build, and pretty expensive for the capability it offers. You can also certainly invent your own design or revise the design of one of the established brakes. It really just boils down to what's right for you with your shop, your tools, and your money. If you want the most capable existing DIY design, however, the Max Machine and Design 96040 bending brake takes the cake. So there you have it. That's just about everything I wished I had known about bending brakes before starting this project. I hope you found this video informative and useful. Please be sure to check out all the links below for the DIY bending brake blueprints and Dan Hill's bending brake build series. Thanks for watching. For more information about the Zenith Stull CH750, please visit Zenith Aircraft Company online at www.zenithair.net. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Be sure to click on the notification bell to receive all the channel updates. For additional information on the project, check out my blog at gregsplane.blogspot.com. You can also contact me directly at gregsstullch750 at gmail.com. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.